In this lesson, we're going to look at solving quadratics by using factoring and the quadratic formula. And we'll begin by solving using factoring. All right, hi everybody. So we're gonna move ahead here. We're gonna look at solving by factoring and then we're gonna use the quadratic formula as, as well here. Uh, so remember, a lot of this should be review of this material. So I'm not going through really trying to teach this. I'm just going to take an opportunity to kind of go back and hopefully re remind you of stuff that you've seen before here. So like it says here, a quadratic equation is an equation written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Okay, and we know how to determine uh, the factors, okay, but sometimes we can't, okay. So sometimes we're going to have to use the quadratic formula to pull those out here. Now remember that when we find the the factors, what we're really looking for here are the x-intercepts of the corresponding graph, or you might say the roots of the equation. So it's important that we catch that. There are three ways of looking at it. It's either the x-intercepts of the graph, the roots of the equation, or the zeros of the function. And they all mean basically the same thing. Okay, we're looking for the value of x that makes this function equal to zero, given the values of a, b, and c. Now, when we're asked to solve x, we should try factoring first and then solving for each of the x values, but if, if that doesn't work, then we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And we'll take a look at that in a second here. And again, just like we said before, you've got the solution to the equation. Those are the roots of the equation, the zeros of the function, or the x-intercepts of the graph. Just three different ways of really looking at this exact same thing and interpreting them. Anyway, let's just jump right in and see what we can do. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to find the roots of the following equations here. So we start off with x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. Now, what I'm going to do here to the best of my ability, I'm going to try to do this by factoring. Okay, so this is a trinomial. Set that equal to 0. So I'm hoping to break that up to two binomials uh, where the leading term here in both of those is going to be x. And I, that makes sense because x times x will equal x squared. And now I'm looking for two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is 5. That's actually easy to do here. It's going to be 2 and 3. Okay. Now, guess and check is often going to be the fastest method to, to factoring. And I know some people don't really like that and they like the, the method that you get uh, with some of the other ways of doing this. And I've seen lots of different ways of, of, whoops, sorry, of doing it here. But ultimately, you're going to ask that question, what do I have to, uh, what two numbers multiply to get this or add to get this other value here? Now, once we've got this uh, set up where we have two factors and the product is equal to zero, if their product is equal to zero, that means one of these is equal to zero, okay? And that could happen either where x is equal to negative two or where x is equal to negative three. Both of those work. So those are my two solutions to this, this equation, okay? Or if I was to set the y here equal to, sorry, the zero here equal to y, turn that into a function. Those would be the x-intercepts of the function uh, or the zeros of the function, okay, I should say. Let's try this one. x squared minus 64 equals zero, okay? Now, there are a couple of different ways I can do this, but to be consistent with what I've done to start off with, I'm going to factor that, and it's a difference of squares. So it'll be x minus 8, x plus 8 is equal to zero which means I've got these two equations okay, that could independently go to zero. So this will have a solution where x is equal to eight or x is equal to negative eight. Okay. Now here, question like this, I love it when this sort of thing happens because it's already in factored form. Okay, I've got this function 2x. Now, I could even see this as 2 times x times x plus 3, but it's just as easy to see those two together and say, okay, 2x is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And just treat those as the two separate factors being multiplied together. Now, here, I would divide by 2, and I would get that x is equal to 0, or x is equal to negative 3. And those are the two solutions that make that work. Down here... 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, notice that this is a linear factor, or sorry, I should say a linear function here. I don't need to factor this one, okay? It's, it's a linear. In these previous uh, questions here, what I was doing was trying to convert a quadratic into linears. But here, I've just got a linear. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that 5 over, make sure I change the sign, okay? Because I'm going to subtract that 5 from both sides, and I'm going to divide by 2, negative 5 over 2. 
over here. Once again, it's in factored form, so the work is mostly done for me. So all I have to do is set each of those factors individually equal to zero, and then solve. And here I'll get x is equal to positive two. Now here I'm gonna to have to do this in two steps because the, the linear factor that I get here, similar to the linear uh, function I had over here, I have to do this in two steps. Bring the constant over and then divide by the coefficient. So bring the constant over and then divide by the coefficient. And so I get x equal to negative one half. Same thing with this expression. 2x minus one is equal to zero or 2x plus three is equal to zero. Okay, either one of these will work. So my first step is going to be to bring that constant term over, and then I'll divide. So x is equal to 1 half, or x could be equal to negative 3 halves, and both of those will work. Over here, now I'm back to a quadratic that isn't in factored form, but I've only got two terms here. Okay. So immediately I'm thinking, well, it could be a difference of squares, but that second term isn't a perfect square. So the next thing we're going to look at, is there anything common there? Well, yeah, there is. There is a factor of 4 and a factor of x in both of those terms. Now, that is going to leave me, if I, if I divide that out of both those terms, it's going to leave me with x minus 8. And so if I multiply this back through, just to ch check here, yeah, that takes me right back to the original expression. So, yeah, that's good. And so now this one is similar, if I can, to this one right here. Very, very similar. So I'm going to deal with it in the same way. I'm going to treat these two factors here as one function. So 4x could equal 0, or x minus 8 could equal 0, in which case x is 0, or x is 8. With this one right here, uh, they've done this one a little bit differently. Uh, Normally what we would have seen here is 9x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. And that is something that we could do here. In which case we could have factored it similar to this one by treating it as a difference of squares. But I knew this one was coming up here so I've kind of left it like this. One of the things that I could do here is just get the x squared by itself by dividing both sides by the coefficient. Okay, so this is another way I can do that. Now, then I'm going to take the square root of both sides and the square root Okay, remember how this works here. I can make this equal to the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And so when all that's said and done, the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 9 is 3. However, what I've done here is, is incorrect. And it's something that you really have to pay attention to when you do this. If I square a variable and get a positive value, I don't know whether that initial value for x was a positive number or a negative because the square will get rid of that. So when I take the square root like that, I have to include this plus or minus in there. Now if I was to bring the 16 over and do this as a difference of squares, that plus or minus would have popped out all on its own. Okay. Now let's take a look at this one right here. This one is, is actually very similar to this one except that this time, uh, instead of the, uh, the number here, the constant being on the right-hand side, the constant's been moved over. So I'm going to do uh, this one in that other method here. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to factor out the 5, and this becomes x squared minus 9. And so what I've got here now is a difference of squares. Now I could have brought the 45 over and then divided by 5, but it doesn't really matter. It both ways work here. So this becomes a difference of squares. So x minus 3 times x plus 3 is equal to 0. And so either x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 3 is 0. Either one of those will make the whole expression equal to 0. So either x is 3 or x is negative 3. Over here, very, very similar sort of a problem, except for one little detail. That 16 is not divisible by 3. Now normally what I would have liked to have done is taken that 3 out. But I can't. It doesn't go out nicely out of the 16. So in this case right here, uh, I'm tempted to actually do it the way I did uh, the question H here. It's just to do, uh, move the 16 over myself here, make it look like this, and then make it x squared equals 16 over 3. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, remembering that when I take the square root, I need to include okay, the plus or minus out, out front there. Now, 
this is going to become plus or minus 4 over the square root of 3 because I can take the square root of 16. Now I have this root 3 in the denominator there. Okay, it's an interesting question as to whether can I leave it like that? Can I leave it as 4 over root 3 or do I have to rationalize and get rid of the root 3? Well, for the time being, I really think you should just rationalize that. Just get rid of that uh, radical in the denominator. If you're looking at that and there's any hesitation at all, just do it. Just multiply numerator and denominator by root 3 to get rid of it. Okay, this one, 3x cubed minus 27x is equal to 0. Well, these are definitely not differences of squares. That's right, this isn't a difference of squares. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out what's common. And I've got a 3x common to both those terms. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus 9 equal to 0. So now I've got 3x, and this is going to become x minus 3, x plus 3 equal to 0. Now I've got three different terms, though, okay, that could all be forcing this expression to go to 0. So either 3x is equal to 0, x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 equals 0, in which case x could be 0, x could be positive 3, or x could be negative 3. Now, notice that I ended up with three different solutions here, and the degree was 3. Is there a connection there? The answer is yes. Yes, there's a direct connection there. Every time I have a quadratic, okay, I've got two, uh, two answers. Uh, if it's a linear, I'm only getting one answer. And now that i got a cubic, I've got three answers. Now, let's take a quick look at this one. Uh, this one here, I'll finish off. This one here is a difference of squares. And I'll factor it as a difference of squares. So this is going to be 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1. So 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, or 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Bring the constants over. And so either x is equal to 1 half, or x is equal to negative 1 half. Okay. So I hope this just kind of helps get you thinking about how to, to solve those kind of problems all over again. Okay, everybody, so let's take a look at our, our next uh, set of questions here. And just bear in mind, like we said before, that not every quadratic equation can be factored. But when it can't be factored, you're, you're still not stuck because we've got the quadratic formula. And what that's going to give us are these, these numbers with a square root in them, okay? Um, so the, the, these are numbers that you wouldn't normally guess and create to, to factor these things. I mean, they're not obvious to you, but you can still get them uh, just by following the formula here. So now we're going to just take a look at a handful of problems where that's what we do. Okay, so here we go. So solve each problem using the quadratic formula. Well, remember how that works. So x is going to equal the negative of the b value plus or minus the square root of the b value squared. Now the most common mistake made here is to not include the negative when you square it. People will leave the negative out. You need to include the negative before you square that here. So minus 4 times a times c and then this is all going to be over 2 times the a value. So that is going to be positive 12 plus or minus the square root of 144, positive 144, okay, minus uh, what that's going to be? That's going to be 88, okay, over 4. And so that's not that hard to simplify. Whoops, except I'm going to go off the page there. Plus or minus the square root of 56 all over 4. Okay, well, now 56 can be broken up into uh, 8 times 7. And I don't actually know why I did that. There's a better way of doing that. I don't know why I did that to myself. This is going to end up being uh, 4 times 2 times 7 all over 4. And so the reason I did that is because I can take the square root of that 4, pull that out, and I'm going to get 12 plus or minus 2 root. Well, there's a 2 and a 7 that I can't take the square root of, so they're going to stay in there as 14 over 4. Okay, and now there's this each of these three terms has a common factor of, of 2. Now, notice I can't just go 12 divided by 4 and make that 3. I can't do that, okay, because I have to, if I, 
if I'm going to divide it here, then I have to divide the 4 here. It has to distribute to both terms. The mistake a lot of people make is they just immediately cancel it here by only distributing it to one of the terms in the numerator. And you, you can't do that. How I can, however, take a common 2 out of both terms in the numerator. Whoops, sorry, over 4. And then I can cancel the 2 and the 4 there and make this 6 plus or minus root 14 over 2. That I can do. And I think that would probably be a better way for most people to do this because you're less likely to make that mistake of just canceling with one term. So there's, there's one set of answers. 6 plus root 14 over 2 and 6 minus root 14 over 2. Remember that plus or minus refers to two different operations okay, that occur separately. This, there's no operation that's plus minus. It's 6 plus root 14 over 2 or 6 minus root 14 over 2. Now let's take a look at this one x is going to equal negative of the b value, the 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay, So that is that is it. There, The answer is, is right inside there. I just need to now simplify it. So negative 2 plus or minus, okay, what's this going to be? 4 plus 24 all over 12. Alrighty, so that's going to be two, negative 2 plus or minus, well that's root 28 all over 12. Okay, so now I'm in the same position, I want to simplify this a little bit. So root 28, well 28 is 4 times 7 and I like that because I can take the square root of the 4 and pull that out. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 7. Okay, because bear in mind, what I just did there is I just took the square root of 4 and made it 2. Now, everything is still multiplied together, so that's still 2 multiplied by root 7 there. <coughs> now, there is a common factor of 2 in the numerator, so I'm going to take that out, and that's going to leave me with negative 1 plus or minus root 7 all over 12. Whoops, can't see that. Oh, boy, I left you behind a little bit ago. And then the 2s uh, cancel in both those, and we're left with negative 1 plus or minus root 7 over 6. Okay, like that answer. It's good. Now let's just do one more here. So here x is equal to negative of negative 6, the b value there, plus or minus the square root of, now remember once again, I got to include the negative in there when I square it, minus 4 times a times c, oops, all over 2 times a, and this time a is equal to 1. So now I'm going to get positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus, now I'm just going to make sure, I've got a calculator here, I want to make sure I do this correctly here, yep, that's what I was assuming was going to happen here. So now 36 minus 52, okay, underneath the square root symbol is going to be negative 16 over 2. Okay, now as soon as that happens, okay, as soon as that happens, I can't take the square root of negative 16 and get a real number. This creates what we call an imaginary number. Okay, it still exists. It's still a, a, a number here. It's just not a real number. And in, in our curriculum here, we are kind of restricted to the real numbers. So what we say here is there's no real roots. So there's no real root, at the very least. Now, just to show you what's going on here, let's take a quick look at this. Whoops. So I just realized that my, my window settings here might be a little bit off here, my calculator. But now if I go to my calculator and, and graph x squared, okay, pl uh, minus 6x plus 13, because I just found that when I use the quadratic formula on this, I got no roots, this should be a, a parabola that doesn't touch the x-axis. So let's see where that draw, and there we go. So it comes down but it never actually hits the x-axis. There is no place here where this function is equal to zero. And that's confirmed by the math that we just did right there.